So one of the tricks of doing these pavers is using cardboard. And so I'll, let me flip you guys around and show you what I mean by that. So a piece like this, obviously with these big pavers, it's hard to get uh, you know anything in there to see what kind of shape or size you need. So what we do is just pull each of these up a little bit and shim cardboard under there. We'll come out with either our uh, utility knife, X-Acto blade, or just a, simply a pencil. Trace that out, lift them back out, and come back, then just grind it out. So as you can see, it's just nicely. Everything focusing back towards the house. This is going to be one of my favorite projects of this year, hands down. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. What's up everybody, it is Jack Danley and it is day three out on this project. As you can see, yesterday we beat the rain and managed to get all the liner in, which is great. Guys are already starting to rock in the pond. I got a nice wall going in here, got to get the seam. So it should be a great day and dig around to see some of the progress we got. these things huh these are those saw cut granite steppers that are about 19 inches tall and they're various shapes and thicknesses but i love let's see how good jack did Woo! on the bubble nice so this is going to be that organic pathway leading through the pond waterfalls will enter in somewhere over there the next stepper is going to come out here another one there and then another one there leading us out into the rest of the yard this is that brick wall jd's been doing a crazy awesome job at bird dog in this part of the project and it looks awesome i love the arc great shape in through here we're going to get another set of boulders in here for him to terminate that wall into and then this stuff will all disappear underneath the gazebo so we are rocking and rolling on this pond really pleased with the progress and we got a lot done so far in the first few hours we're gonna take lunch because this stepper right here took a little while to set just to kind of shim it up get it level and it's everybody's tummy's grumbling so we're gonna go ahead and get lunch i see somebody up there oh, there's a couple guys jack's ready for lunch see him i'm always ready for lunch yeah That's a lot. boulder work all that good stuff in through here you still want to make sure that we can access the snorkel and being able to get that lid on and off so you don't want to have these rocks too close either way or ever give them the chance to kind of settle backwards and really pinch that lid so it looks like this is solid so that snorkel lid will sit back there and then these steppers as you walk through the wetland will lead you back out to that stepper pathway that comes through here so something that's going on now that wasn't originally part of the plan was harvesting some of that rainwater and being able to use mother nature as kind of the autofill so matt and jeremiah oh and zach zach's new to this video but he's not a new face to team aquascapes channel what's How up buddy what's how up? are you so he's replacing papa today papa's off but you guys are putting in one of these first flushes that we're going to harvest some of the rainwater from the roof line of the house and then we're just going to run some drain tile down through here and then rebuild that stepper pathway and honestly i think you guys are going to make it look better than it was but this will be that seamless transition coming out of the wetland filter leading you back out to this side yard so guys what are we doing we're putting in a first flush which is our downspout this is our pre-filter there's a very very fine net that will catch all the asphalt shingle dust or any of the debris that comes down through the downspout here that's collected by the gutters that comes off the roof line then it's only depositing water through this drain tile right and then we're going to run it down this way and we're just relying on gravity i assume fellas perfect because there's a nice gradual slope down right into the wetland yeah so, yeah any rainwater gets filtered all the sediments stay in the uh, filter 
filter and good stuff gets passed down to the, uh, the pond. If it rains too hard, then there's an overflow that'll take care of any excess water. Yep, so. that's awesome. Yeah, this was a kind of a last second add on yesterday, Zach. Um, you weren't here, but we no. talked to the homeowners. About some of the different creative solutions for some of the challenges. Well, I started talking to Steve about some of the projects that he wanted to do after we were done. And he's like, oh, I'm gonna take this downspout and I'm gonna, where should I daylight it at? I said, well, why don't we put a first flush on here? Just do it the correct way. Do it the correct way, right. And not just take it down to a piece of pipe and then run it directly in, because right? I'm telling you, all that sediment, all the shingles, you're gonna have to change that padding, make sure it's clean because it's a lot of shingles that come off of there. Yeah, yeah. So, and that would just, clog up in the filter mm -hmm. in the wetlands. Yes, so. and we don't want that to happen. We want to make sure that that stays functional. But it's good that we're doing this now because now we can really make that seamless transition from the step, those awesome steppers in the wetland, yep. back into that walkway, which we we're going to have to do anyways. Yep. But it's good that we're doing this now and not exactly. an afterthought, right? So what do you think? I think it's a good okay, idea. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> Perfect oh, add-on. Especially if he's going to do it anyway. You right? don't want to throw the filter on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Awesome, guys awesome well can't wait to show this as it uh, evolves in through here big day really really happy with the progress that we're making we've got a lot of hands on deck and a lot of plates spinning on this project we got Juan continuing to load up some of this excess dirt from the berm we just generated so much stinking soil we need to get rid of some of it we didn't originally anticipate but that's okay um, it's all part of it so he's gonna do that these guys are gonna start working on the wall we're gonna set a couple rocks like maybe one more rock over there so that Jack can start working his way this way once all this dirt's out of here we can get back down with the machine start taking some of these boulders and start dropping them in finish off that wetland we're gonna work on buttoning up this whole area today this area get a couple rocks set so jack can finish the wall so by the end of the day today and the, before the weekend starts we're hoping to have this wall done the wetland done jack not to end up in the hospital That's and the goal. and to get our steppers set in through here we'll get this all buttoned up it is going to be awesome and we're gonna have a big day today follow along this amazing fast pace ride out here on Fired Up Friday. Wall is complete. It looks so incredible over here. The cuts, yeah, it, it looked incredible for a second until you did that. But it just looks awesome. In through here, the lights cut in. It is now finished. The wetland over here where Juan's at. The wetland looks gorgeous because I The wetland looks gorgeous because Jack, he did it, of course. Anything that the Jack's touch is golden. We've got our first flush that was back over there all tied in. We just have to finish it up around here. So we just have some small edge work to do. And then there are those cut granite steppers that are really a focal point of the pond which looks awesome i love the serpentine shape how you kind of change directions every step where you go but just look at the pond it's huge it feels enormous and we haven't even rocked half of it maybe half but we still have the entire intake area underneath the gazebo and that's that so still an enormous amount of work as we always say on our channel but we will prevail and get it all done so till next time we're gonna take off it's weekend time fired up friday Friday. It's too bad you guys out there don't get to see us on a Friday and we could live it vicariously through each other, but sorry. Mm hmm. Bye. Things are happening out here. New day, Friday. new week, new group of contractors. We got Jack over here in the machine. We're gonna get ready to set this cut granite boulder. And that's going to be our footer for the one post or the one corner of the gazebo. So we're gonna set that down in here and then start rocking our way back that way. But I love the progress. JD's over here working on doing all of this flagging work over top of the wall. And then the challenging part is going to be reincorporating it seamlessly into that pathway that comes down where these guys are working. There's a big root from this honey locust that heaved up a lot of this stuff. So we're having to cut that out in order to maintain a nice, even elevation change. We'll probably pitch it up just a little bit to get it down to here. And then that slopes up about an inch and a half going up that way. So it's just hard making all the elevations work while keeping the water level as approachable as possible. So I think we're in great shape. Basically Based on the wall that JD built here with Chris, I have no doubts that this is gonna look incredible. So now it's up to the rest of us to finish out the rest of the pond while they work on that and make that look equally as good as what's behind me. So we're gonna set this boulder and then get rolling from there.
so what the guys are doing right now is we are carving out where our pump vault's gonna be sitting for our intake base. So we have 12 small aqua blocks inside of our intake bay, one pondless waterfall vault, and then we are gonna have a 1000 series skimmer sitting back in that corner over there. The boot of the pondless waterfall vault will sit perfectly at the bottom of our intake bay, and that way our aqua blocks will sit nice and flush, and that way we can rock all the way around, disguising everything all nice and clean and easy. What's up everybody? We're wrapping up the day. Uh, made some tremendous progress today. As you can see, we got two milestones done. One being the intake bay. I believe we had 12 aqua blocks and our pump vault sits right behind this rock right here. You guys did a great job. As you can see, Chris also managed to incorporate a pretty big fish cave with a nice light shining right out so we'll be able to see them when they're in there. Uh, Luis, Chris, and I also finished another big project or part of this project, which was the patio coming down from their porch, then walking over to their gazebo. So let me flip you guys around and show you that. So as you can see, out of these pavers, we managed to get some really tight joints. So one of the tricks of doing these pavers is using cardboard. And so I'll, let me flip you guys around and show you what I mean by that. So a piece like this, obviously with these big pavers, it's hard to get uh, you know anything in there to see what kind of shape or size you need. So what we do is just pull each of these up a little bit and shim cardboard under there. We'll come out with either our uh, utility knife, X-Acto blade, or just a, simply a pencil. Trace that out, lift them back out, and come back, then just grind it out. So as you can see, it's just nicely. And then following that, we come over right over stepping onto our wetland, just a seamless transition. Alright everyone, we're back. We are back. Start of a brand new day. Beautiful out. And we got the pond finished rocked behind me. So the pond is done. Working on edging out the wetland filter over here. Finishing up all of this. It looks awesome. We brought that three inch drain tile in and just came in high in through the liner there. Put a little band clamp around it and then covered it with cobbles. The snorkel sits right there. That runs this way straight through. And then our plumbing discharges up out that way. We're gonna end up snaking that back that way. We got Jack over here. Getting ready to strap up a spill stone for one of our waterfalls, but this looks incredible. That's all done. So John, Desert Springs is on the dingo right now, moving some of this dirt out of here. We've got, still have to knock this berm down considerably, but we're gonna start tackling this waterfalls or at least the bottom in through here. And then we'll start working into that retaining wall as well. So we've got the pond fairly rinsed. We're gonna go ahead and rinse it down again. And then we're gonna get this thing filling as we're starting to build this waterfall coming up. So big day today. I think we're going to have to split up tomorrow so we're trying to get as much done with the large group that we have today to really make things happen so it's gonna be awesome 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 big day out here on the job site so all right Jackie boy you ready let's go Everybody, we are back. It is D-Day out here at this awesome and incredible pond rehab project. Plants just showed up because we are going to do a little bit of landscaping here, but we have the waterfalls finished. We just have to kind of fine tune it, tweak it a little bit. We've got some retaining wall work, which you see JD working on back here. The rest of the guys from Desert Springs are working on doing some dirt work. We have a lot of work ahead of us today, but it's all detail work, which I love personally. And I know Jack does too because of his passion 
four detail as oh, you yeah. saw in the brick wall and everything else. So it's gonna be a good day, dude. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, finally get to see this thing totally come to life. So, I mean, we fired it up for a little yesterday, but today's the day. That's, today is the day. So let's go see what, I heard the plants out there. You wanna go take a look let's real check quick? Check them out, yeah. yeah. Let's see what we got. So a lot of times we don't get the opportunity to do the softscape on projects. We've talked about it in, in a lot of our episodes, but it, it truly is kind of the final decoration, right? It's the star on top of the Christmas tree or just that last little finishing touch, the bow on top of the presents after you're done wrapping it. So we're super, super excited. And holy cow, that's that paper bark maple. I have the exact same thing at my house and I absolutely love it. That thing's incredible. Nice. Yeah, our hole's a little not deep enough. No. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Matt. Okay. Well, it is what it is. We've got some weeping cedars. We've got a gingerbread paper bark maple. We've got a bunch of other shrubs and perennials in there. We got the guys from Wasco Nurseries up there. They have incredible plant material, which is the big reason we use them. We always pay a little bit more, but you get what you pay for. And if anybody's looking for a class act operation out in the western suburbs of Chicagoland, Wasco Nursery is where it's at. Hit Matt Zerby up. He is absolutely incredible. He's one of the most knowledgeable people I've ever met in the industry and is just such an extreme help. Always helps us out in a pinch and we've worked together a long time but he's incredible so we're gonna get the dingo get the forks on it i gotta get that tree planted it's really going to lock us in and take a little bit of time so we gotta get that going so i'm gonna put the camera down and we're gonna go Sure, He's, we're gonna get those other cedars for you. Wherever you want, so I'm not in the wheelbarrow, it's okay, or the tree car. Oh, uh, we're gonna bring the dingo up and we'll get them. You can put them on the driveway. The driveway? Yeah, and then we'll bring them back. Okay, perfect. Cool. No problem, sir. Awesome, thank you. All right. Appreciate you. No problem, man. All right, one tree down, three more to go, and then a handful of shrubs, right? right? All right, nice. So this is that gingerbread paperwork maple. It's a little bit different than most of the maples you see in our area. It's a gorgeous tree. It's got brilliant fall color. I think what we'll do is untie it, and then we'll get it leveled off, and then we'll start back filling. the sound of the water and it is flowing we are just finishing up the last of all the little detail work the plants are in chris is over here working on the dosing system and ion gen a lot of times we'll put it right next to the skimmer box however this time we're gonna put it where the gazebo is going to be erected and we're gonna just mount everything to the back side of the gazebo and he's got that quarter inch feeder tube is daylighting down in the pond right there so as long as it's getting back into the water column then we're all good it doesn't always have to go into the skimmer itself. And you can see we've got a little bit of dirt work. We beat down this whole area back in here. So this is the back side of the burn. We've got some of these weeping Alaskan cedars. There's three of them. There's some ornamental onion back here. Some big blue hostas. These things will get huge. Uh, those are, I believe, Crosa Regal. They will take the environment as well as get very, very large. We've got some limelight hydrangeas, some junipers, cool little gravel beach over here. And then we continue these steppers going back across the stepper path. 
halfway in through here, which turned out really, really nice. Just to transition everything. So we still have to kind of clean everything up, blow everything off. We've got to do some poly sand on this patio that I'm standing on, get the fish back in here, that kind of stuff. But it is the home stretch. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon. So we have made really great progress of what we made very quick progress of the work that we had in front of us today. So that's pretty exciting. It's always nice when things come together, especially on a Friday. But yeah, it looks awesome. The only part that you guys will not see finished as a finished edge will be this area right in through here. And that's where that gazebo is going to be built. So you've got a corner here that comes out to a footer right about there. Then it goes to there, over to that uh, boulder there, which one of the posts will set on and then it ties back in over there. So once that's done, hopefully we can get back out here and show you, um, but probably not on this episode, maybe at a later date on a project showcase or something like that. So so I have a lot of cleanup left to do, but we're in great shape and I love, love it, how it turned out. And I can't wait to show you, but stick around and you're going to see it. It's going to be awesome. All right, I put the camera down too soon. Now we are going to start reintroducing the customer's fish. So we've got them in that holding tank right back here. John is going to start draining out the holding tank here. We're going to pump this water back into the pond over there and then we'll get the fish out. So it shouldn't be a stressful process for either us pulling the fish out or the fish themselves. So we're going to use our sock net, take our time and treat everything, treat the fish very, very carefully as we put them back in. We made sure last night to pump out about half of the host water, which was in this tank that came out from the original pond. And we pumped that into the new pond and we ended up filling this up with some of the tap water that we use to fill the pond with just to help get them acclimated so stay tuned incredible transformation. I'm not sure if you guys can recall from the first video, but if you remember, this was only about a 15 by 15 pond. It was about a six, seven foot stream, and it was gorgeous, right? 15, 16 years ago, when we were out here and built the first one, Rafi, his team, they did a great job. The customers have been on so many pond tours over the last decade and a half, and they started picking and choosing all the little pieces that they wanted to see in their forever pond, and I think we delivered on all of those. We've got a wetland filter, we've got the steppers, going across the pond, which they had as part of their original design, if you remember. We have the brick wall with the fish feeding area and the cantilevered patio, which I'm actually standing on right now. They're gonna have the gazebo coming out and one of the posts being integrated into the pond so the water looks like it disappears underneath the gazebo, making it very, very unique, a very cool effect. And then of course, you have a super dramatic waterfalls to boot, right? Everything focusing back towards the house. This is going to be one of my favorite projects of this year hands down. Between all of those things I just mentioned to the incredible work with the CACs, the guys from Desert Springs, Dylan from Pinellas Ponds, we had Matt and Jeremiah from Matera Landscapes. We just had an incredible group and it's so awesome to have the tribe be a part of builds like this and it makes it that much more special for us. I love it. I love it. I love where I'm standing right now. I love that I'm standing on top of this incredible patio made out of natural stone that sits on top of that two and a half 
half foot brick wall going straight down. This is such a cool area. They've got a grandson, Rowan, who I can only imagine at some point is gonna get his tummy time out here. And then when he learns to sit up, he'll be sitting on the edge. And at some point, when he learns how to swim, this might be his little jumping off point. But until then, he will have an incredible area to sit with his grandparents, sit with his parents, and feed the fish and enjoy really what the aquascape lifestyle is all about. I love the fact that you can walk any which way when you come down from the steps of this gorgeous multi-tiered composite deck. I mean, this is such an awesome outdoor space already, but when it leads you to all of this, I mean, this thing is to the nines. When you get down to this landing, I like the fact, and Brian talks about this a lot in his design process, is being able to create mystery, right? Or giving the person experiencing different options on what they can do. So I love that I can either go left and kind of meander my way and poke around and go through the bog to go to the back side of the house, or I can choose to go straight ahead and walk across these awesome steppers that allow you across the pond and really interact and walk through everything. The fish swimming in between the steppers is such a cool effect and lead you back out into the backyard. Or I can come back and be like, oh, I forgot something. Oh, it's in the gazebo. I'll just come this way and I will come into what will eventually be this incredible gazebo screened in area that they'll be able to use so many more days out of the year when it's inclement weather. They can still enjoy the pond, not only from inside the house, their gazebo. Just so, so cool. The design and how everything fits together. I wish we would be able to show you this built. Maybe we can do that at some point, but it just feels like it's 99.8% there. Once the gaze this gazebo goes up, it's gonna be 110% awesomeness out here. all the things that I love right about the design and one of the things that I mentioned was the waterfalls itself now Cindy and Steve the clients were like I mentioned they had been going on pond tours for the last 15 years so they've seen hundreds and hundreds of water features and what it allowed them to do is it really helped them understand what they wanted and occasionally we run into a customer that wants a water feature they just don't quite understand how to articulate exactly what they want on the other hand we have customers like Cindy and Steve who know exactly what they want and they were very good about communicating that with us. She wanted a wide waterfall, multiple drops. She wanted to change it from her original waterfall where it was about seven feet and it kind of did a 90 degree turn through a series of three drops. This, she wanted water coming from all over the place. She wanted wide waterfalls. She wanted narrow, tall ones, different levels, elevations, all that stuff. And I think we nailed it. In fact, I know we did because while we were kind of cleaning up, I heard her talking into the phone about the water feature and she said it's flipping awesome. I don't know if she used the word flipping, but I'm going to go ahead and paraphrase for her, and I have to agree with her. I love all of the different waterfalls. There's so much going on with this waterfalls. You've got wa little pieces of water. You've got tall veils of water. You've got wide sheets. You've got white water. You've got Babbly Brook style. You even have the wetland filter down here coming into the pond where everything's merging. And the cool thing about it is these steppers go right in front of it. And it's just such a cool, cool, cool design. I love it just because it's so unique. There's so many different things happening. It's like sensory overload without being obnoxious and overwhelming. I think I've said enough. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. This project has been absolutely incredible. The customers are incredible. You guys, our viewers are incredible. And yes, Team Aquascape and the fellow tribe members, the CACs that help put this thing together are also incredible. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, we'll see you later.